Hey everyone, it's Chris from L3D and today I've got a bit of an impromptu video that a few people in the community have been asking for. So I've decided to come on to quickly make a nice short sharp video showing exactly how to do this particular thing. So the thing in question is when you've done your material testing and you've got some nice materials, how do you set up your own custom material in the material library so that you can refer back to it and select it in the future? It's not exactly clear in Excel Studio and I think I need to explain it to you guys and show you exactly how to do it so that going forward you can save your hard work, your hard settings that you've worked hard to get into a specific area that is easy for you to go and get anytime you need it. So let's get on with it and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So we have our workspace, I've already started up here and we've got a keychain that I have on the bed, focused and good to go. I'm gonna refresh the picture. It's not really important in this case, I just wanted something in the background to make it appealing to look at. So let's add in a circle and we're literally just gonna set it to engrave and we're gonna apply some random settings to it, okay? So 50 power and 100 speed. These aren't tested settings, don't just blindly use these. This is just me showing you how it works and I'll set it on a red layer so it's nice and clear. Okay, so by default, if we look up to the top right here, the material set by default is unknown material. That's very important because if you have something else set, when you save your settings, you're gonna see it saves them in a different bit. So I'm gonna display that first to you, okay? So this is the bamboo keychain. So I'm gonna set bamboo as my base material. So you can see I've done that now. So if we clicked on this, it gives us this lovely one click set, which seven times out of 10 is good and the settings are ideal, but it's not always perfect. And you might wanna do your own testing. So let's say you've done your own testing and actually you've said, 90 power, 572 speed, and 180 lines per centimeter is optimal, which you're happy with, okay? You might wanna save those settings as a reference point to address later on if you're doing the same items over and over. And to do that, what you would do is you would click on this button here, which allows you to add your material setting. But there's an element of confusion here because what people don't understand is if you've already got a material selected, like we do in this case, it will save your custom setting into that material. So let's do that, I'll show you. And we'll call this bamboo test. And I'm gonna put in brackets, do not use, so I know in the future not to use it. We've clicked that, and now if you look there, it's called bamboo test, do not use. That's great, we can go in here now, and it's there on the right side, ready for us to select. If I just go in there and do it, we can select that and we can use that. However, this is where the confusion comes in. If you've got something else set, like the default material when you start anything, which is unknown material, you would probably expect to see that in your user-defined area. But now you can see there is nothing there. And this is the issue that I think a lot of people are getting confused with because in Xtool Creative Space, which was the software before this, you would have just everything listed in one list. This is different, okay? They're trying to be organized and trying to be helpful. And once you understand it, it is helpful and it is actually a really good way to organize it. If we were to reselect now bamboo and go into it, click okay, and then go in there, our material still exists in there. And if you close it down and open it up, it will always be in there now, okay? But what I do, and whenever I, so you probably notice whenever I recommend materials, I've got my own specific custom one set up in here. And you're probably wondering, how do I go about doing that? And there is a way to do it, okay? And the way I'll show you is I'm gonna set things back to what it looks like when you open up your Xtool Studio. And let me just drag that off to the side. So you've just started a new project. This is what it looks like, okay? You've put your first design on there and you wanna save your settings for future use, okay? And let's say it's a specific unique material that isn't in this material library because it isn't definitive. There are materials that aren't in there, okay? Let's say this is a unique magic wood that only we've got that this setting is very specific to. Well, to save your own actual material, you need to make sure unknown material is selected in your material, okay? So if you already have something else selected like that, make sure you select it and then go to unknown material. It lives at the top of the list. And once you've selected that, then you can adjust your settings and save them. And now if you click that same button there to save your custom materials, 
what it's actually going to do, it's going to give you more options now. It's going to ask you to specify the material name, the characteristics of your material, the setting name. So if we want to call this custom engraving one, we would put that in there. And then most importantly, you can put a picture of the material or the image. So we've called this magic wood in this case. It is a flammable material. Um, you can put other things, use odor to protection and clean the material after processing. That's up to you. You can leave it blank. Then we could put um, detailed vector one. That could just be our name, okay? And if you want to give it a special picture, and you probably see in my ones, what I like to do is I like to just give them my logo. I mean, that's, that's different. I like to just do that look. And then once you click submit, what you'll see is now that material is called magic wood. And within that magic wood material, you've got your detailed one, ve detailed vector one, which is our material setting. Now, if you actually changed it and you saved it again, detailed, uh, detailed magic two, for example, that's put it in there. But in your same list, you've got the original one. So you can add to those materials. That's so critical to understand that aspect because it can get so confusing. I know it because I've been confused by it. So that is the key thing. And also what I will say is if we start a new tab now, and that's what I'm going to do, and you click on unknown material and specify material, our material is now populated in that list permanently so that you can always select it. So you would select it, click apply, click OK. It will give us the flame warning because we did actually specify that it was flammable. And then when you actually select engrave, you have your settings. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully you understand the concept of this much more now. Like I said, it's a little bit confusing at first, but it is actually a good thing. And it is something I think you should implement into your workflow because it will make your life easier. As I've shown you, you can refer back to them. So in the future, when you see my tutorial videos or my beginner project videos, and I've pulled up a material that's preset, that is exactly what I've done to do that. So you can follow the same instruction. You can take the settings from those videos, make your own versions of it, put it into your software and you're good to go. And hopefully that's gonna make your life a little bit easier. Moving on to those, don't forget to check out the channel because we have lots of Xtool Studio tutorials. We have lots of Xtool F2 beginner projects. We've got beginner projects for the F1 Ultra, the F1, all around laser engraving content. So if you like that, please subscribe to us so you don't miss them. And I wanna thank you for watching. And finally, we have a really, really great, helpful community on Facebook, the F2 Owners Group and the F Makers Group. I'll put a link in the description below, but those groups are full of people that are willing to help. We share settings, we do not gatekeep. So if you're interested in that, please feel free to join and get as much as you can out of that group and hopefully feed back into this great community. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been helpful. And once again, don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day, everyone. See you later.